Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to take a look at fading a filter. Now, if you're here with us last week, you saw how smart filters worked, and smart filters also involve fading. But the fade command is available on all versions of Photoshop. So if you're not using CS3 or CS4, or for some reason you don't want to use smart objects, you can get by with the fade command, and it's pretty flexible. Let's see how it works. I've got a picture opened up here, and what I'm going to do is choose to run a filter. So let's choose Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we'll push that out to a pretty high value of about 40. I'll then click OK, and immediately before I do anything else, I could choose Edit, Fade Gaussian Blur. By doing that, we get an opacity slider that lets us back it off as well as blending modes. So I'll go to something like soft light and drop the opacity down a bit and we get a really nice intensification there. A little bit of a smoothing, sort of like a pro mist filter and the blues in the skies get nicely saturated. If I decide I want to do some more filtering, we could do that. Filter, texture, grain. And this goes ahead and adds some texture in. Let's put it in as a little bit of soft grain or maybe a little bit of sprinkles. And we could play with the intensity and the amount of contrast. And when we have something we like, it's very easy to modify it. Let's go with the sprinkles. And I'll click OK. It adds the grain. And we can then choose Edit Fade Grain. And we could play with that. For example, a nice overlay mode and drop the opacity down and we get more of a modeling texture and not quite as strong on the image. And that's really the way this is meant to work. The fade command lets you gently fade back the filter and modify it, both the opacity and the blending mode. Let's use one more filter. I'm going to go ahead and choose filter, sketch, note paper. Now this does this cool effect that actually finds sort of the edges and pushes it and we could play with the image balance there to say what part is affected as well as relief which will affect the perceived depth of the paper. I'll click OK and then immediately choose Edit Fade. Got lots of blend modes to use here. Let's go ahead and try Color Dodge or something a little bit gentler like soft light and we'll back that off a bit and look how the cloud seems to pop right now. That's a pretty cool effect. Now, there's lots of filter recipes out there and you can look for these, but there's a few cool things about the fade command I want you to know. First off, if you want to run the fade command, shift command F or shift control F will allow you to fade the filter. Now, if for some reason you forget to do a fade, Go ahead and choose Edit Step Backwards until just before you ran the filter and then you could run it one more time and fade it. Let's see how. So for example, if I went in and I applied that Gaussian Blur and I popped it and I hit OK and then I started to do some work and I selected the Marquee Tool and I made a selection and I suddenly realized, oh, I forgot to fade it? No big deal. Notice here we could simply step backwards. The fade command's gone. But if I step backwards, it'll go through, and I go just before we ran the filter. Then press Command F or Control F on a PC to run the last filter again with the same values. Then you can immediately choose Fade, Shift Command F, and access those controls to get the look you're going for, and click OK. So Fade Command is very flexible. You should make it part of your processing techniques. And if you do this, it's going to significantly expand the effectiveness of your filter collection. My name is Rich Harrington. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Be sure to tune in next week where we'll explore some really cool techniques that are going to help you speed up your Photoshop workflow. Thanks again.
we've created a custom iPhone and iPod Touch application all about panoramic photography. You can download it to your phone or iPod Touch from the iTunes Store, and it's a complete training experience. You get videos, hands-on files, interactive training, and even an interactive photography guide right on your iPhone or iPod Touch that you take with you, so when you're out in the field, you can capture great panoramic photos.